Hey everyone, let's see how we're going to deploy Kafka Streams application on Kubernetes. And for that, the first thing I have to do is run a producer and just generate some fake data, some trades for my trade statistics application to process. So the producer has started and I can actually go to Confluent Control Center and validate that some data is making it in there. So here I am, I'm inspecting the topic and you can see that I already have some traits to analyze and new traits are coming in. So we're all good here. Now it's time to actually deploy our streams application. And to do that, I'm basically just running kubectl create with our YAML deployment file that we discussed earlier. And you can see that within a few seconds, the deployment was created. What does it mean? If I go to kubectl and do get pods, and I'm doing it with watch so you can see how the deployment changes over time. I'm just saying, show me all the pods from the, this application. And I see one pod already running. One thing you can notice is that the name here, it says that it's a stream stock stats pod, but then it has a very random identifier. This is because it's a stateless set, and therefore the pods have only transient identity. Then it, it, the name is not really meaningful if it in itself. If you kill it, another name will come back in, and therefore it doesn't really matter, and it's just a random string. Now that the application is already up and running, I can switch over to Control Center and take a look at the output. So I'm switching to a different topic. You can see the stock stats output. And if I do inspect, I can now see the results of my uh, statistics. And you can see the total price, the minimum price, the average price, how many trends there were, and so on and so forth. That's like my time window uh, event. So the app is obviously running, which is really cool. We can also take a look at the consumer lag. So you can see here's my application. And you can see that right now I'm about 100 messages behind that max and uh, some of the consumers are doing better. You can see that all the consumers from all the partitions have the same ID because I only have one instance of the application. So let's scale it out a bit and run this, uh, basically add another instance to the deployment. So I'm doing scale deployment and I'm saying that I want two replicas instead of one now. And again, a few seconds, and you can see that we now have a second um, replica. Don't worry about all the duplicates. Again, it's a watch. It will just keep pinging whenever something changes. And But you can see that now I have two random numbers um, instances. And if I go back to look at the lag, you can see that it already rebalanced. I have now two different consumers and obviously the lag is slightly smaller because we are we have more power to process all of those. What happens if I want to scale it out even more? Let's say I want three replicas now. So scale again, this time three replicas. And you can see that the third one is not running, it's pending. Why is it pending? Well, I cheated a bit. I only have two Kubernetes nodes. And remember that we discussed anti-affinity rules. I don't want two Kafka stream instances on the same node. And therefore, if I have two, one runs here, one is here, the third will run nowhere. And if I go back to the consumer lag, you can see that basically nothing changed. And that we are still processing events and catching up. That's also important to notice. Okay, now we scaled up, let's scale down. Basically say replicas equals one now. It's kind of getting boring by now. I hope you got used to it. And if we take a look, we can see that the two other instances are terminating. Again, our stream processing job will rebalance. We'll recover the RocksDB state from where we last found it. And you can see that once again, we have the same consumers three times. We're all running on the same instance. So that was nice for a stateless deployment. We scaled it in, we scaled it out. We saw how rebalancing moves things around and catches up quite fast. Now time for stateful deployments. So first we delete our existing deployment so we can deploy a new one. So 
So that's all deleted. And now I can create a new uh, application. This time you can see I'm running the stateful YAML. So it's going to create all the new things that I want to show you. So the first thing you want to check when you have a stateful set and it tells you it's created. You can see the pods are getting created and this time they actually have numbers we can recognize. This is uh, pod zero and this is pod one and they have an identity. And later when I restart pod one, I'll get pod one back. Each of them is connected to its own storage. And after a few seconds, both of them are actually running. It took a bit longer, presumably because we are creating some storage. Let's take a look at the storage we created. So you can see that I have two volumes, one for each RocksDB. Each one of them is bound to a different instance and the access is read write once. So each uh, volume has a single pod connected to it and it can read and write. Nothing very surprising here. Uh, but now that I have specific identities for specific pods, I can try to kill one of them and see what happens. Oh, I also want to make sure that my app is still running. That's also important. And you can see it's still running. You can see that I have two different uh, consumers. One here and then the other two partitions are managed by someone else. And even though we completely switch application deployment, the app just keeps on churning and processing messages. So now what happens if I kill one of those, right? So I basically say delete one of the pods and I'm killing specifically stock sets one. And you can see here that it was terminated and you'll see that it will restart itself in short order. So here it is pending, container creating. So basically it killed it and I killed it and kubectl basically saw that Kubernetes saw that, hey, there are supposed to be two pods here and therefore it just recreated the stocksats one, connecting it to the same storage, etc. If you kill a stateless pod, you get something completely different. It's not trying to resurrect the same thing that got lost. So identity, something, pods that has identity versus a completely anonymous one. So let's make sure that our processing still goes on. You can see that again, I again have two different pods, uh, two different consumers processing the events and processing is still happening. So it rebalanced quite quickly this time because we already had the storage in existence. So the last thing I want to show you is that even though I have a stateful set, which is kind of built to be fixed and reuse the data that is already on the specific machine rather than rebuild it from scratch on new pods all the time, I can still scale out if I want to. I lose the benefits of already having state. I have to recreate the state somewhere else if I scale out, but I can still totally do it. So I can still, even though it's a stateful set, I can do, instead of scale deployment, I can do scale stateful set and say I want three replicas. And because I didn't have anti-affinity rule on my stateful set, which is not a good idea, you should have them, but because I didn't, now I can have three replicas running on two nodes. And you can see that I guess because I have to recreate a state, rebalance is still going on. I'm still seeing only two of them here. Yes. And I'm guessing that the last one, yeah, it's still getting created. You can see the stock set two is still work in progress. I'm betting that here we are. We have the last one running. And if I go now back here, hopefully it will be back in business in a few seconds. Here we are. Now we have three different consumers running and each one of them processing the data and hopefully that will mean even less lag because it just scaled out maximally. We have a specific consumer for each one of our partitions. Okay, last thing for us to do is clean up the whole thing. So just delete the stateful set exactly the same way that I deleted the stateless one. And that's it for today. I hope it was useful. You can find the example on my GitHub and just see all the scripts and how to run it yourself. That's it. Bye-bye.